Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Watercolour Wonders and we're going to talk today about confidence because confidence is something that affects every artist and even though I've been doing this for 20 years now I still look at my work and think that's not good enough I sometimes think that's rubbish and all of these things and negativity build up but if we go back to the basics of watercolour we can get some really exciting ideas on how to move that forward so we're going to start today with going right back to the basics and I'm going to grab a drawing board. I've got here my paint set already and I'm going to grab some paper and this is just this is watercolour paper but any stiff card you've got will be fantastic. I'm just going to lay that on the board. Now, when you've got your paper, it's really important that we do something called stretching. And for that, I'm going to take some of my brightly coloured masking tape. And you can use any type of masking tape or even postage packaging tape for this. I'm just going to lay the card where I'd like it. And I'm just going to put a small border that overlaps about halfway between the paper and the tape. So it's really important to just smooth that wall off. And again, I'm just using slightly coloured stuff simply so it shows up on camera for you to try at home and for you to use. There we go. That's that. Now I'm going to take some water, place that there. And I'm going to take two brush pots today. I'm going to use my larger brushes including these wonderful Da Vinci brushes. And I've got some smaller brushes in here too. Some of these are brush and squirrel brushes. I try and stick to artificial brushes because it's better for the environment and it's more sustainable, but sometimes just old stock comes up cheaper. So it's always worth looking at what you can get. Now I'm gonna take a size 12 brush here and just get some water on that. And very loosely, in a very pale color, I'm going to paint a box. That's a very loose box. There we are. And now, with a big mop brush, which I don't have to have. There's my mop brush, it's one of my favourites. I'm just going to fill that box with water. Starting at the top. And it's very really important when you're doing this stroke, is you don't sort of zigzag it about. You do a stroke, lift, stroke, lift. Over time, it starts to look like an artist just zigzags, but actually there is an important to lift at the end. And keep going until you can see that water has completely filled that square. Now the next step in this process is to get a brush. So I'm gonna go for a trusty red one. This is a Cosmo Spin brush, which is one of the artificial ones I mentioned. And I'm going to go over to the palette and just collect a nice purple. And then just loosely, I'm going to start adding some of that. And you'll see it starts to colour out. I'm adding more water because what I want is lots of colour at the top. Just run back to the palette. Lots of colour at the top. And I'm just going to take that down with water and adding water as I go to create this effect of a wash. I can take that even more. That's it. Now we're just going to wait for that to dry a bit. And once that's dried, we'll add another layer. And what we're going to build is a mountain scene with some forest in the foreground. So feel free to paint along at home with whatever paints you have. And enjoy it. I and mean, let's get back to basics with watercolour. So now that first wash is completely dry and it's really important that it's completely dry. We're going to add a second wash and I think the mountain should be maybe red. So let's mix up some red. Some water on my brush and I'm going to take it off to this nice brick red here. And just add it there and you'll see it starts to come out slightly more orange than red. And that's fine because what we're going to do now is run straight up to here to this nice darker red and mix the two together. And that's a nice sort of sunset, early evening, sort of somewhere exotic where it's nice and warm. 
and I'm just going to add in the shape of some mountains and just give a suggestion of them then just with water I'm going to take that colour down so same way as we did with the purple a bit more water so yeah, run that down run it up so there's a complete join and then we just give a couple of bushes there and that's our second wash in place now these layers aren't quite dry yet but whilst they're drying what you'll notice is the top edges where we put more colour in creates this wonderful tonal value that gives a suggestion of features in the landscape and over on the right I've been a bit preemptive with pulling the wash on because it wasn't quite dry in the purple and that's okay too because it gives the impression of trees or something softer or some sort of vegetation which brings that sort of evening sunlight into being. Okay so now we have two washes on this purple and the nice red that we mixed up and now I'm going to start bringing in some of the forward vegetation so I'm going to get some nice greens and again always take from the colour and then mix onto the palette when I mix up this nice green here maybe a little darker than that and a little bit of that and it's very heavy loaded I'm just going to start giving the suggestion of trees within this They'll also give the suggestion that the trees are sitting on more hills and more landscapes. Again, just a bit more colour. And as we got that there, same again, just with water, just bring that down a bit. I'm just going to add a little bit more colour to there, and then lots more water, and bring all of these colours down. So we have our nice trees all starting to come together but again retaining all the colour at the top of the wash and just letting gravity and the brush bring that water down and that colour down. And we'll stop that about there. And we'll wait for that to dry again. And this may be a time consuming process but sometimes it's absolutely worth it. In fact actually looking at it now whilst it is drying I'm going to run over and get some darker green and just bring that in a bit because I think this bit here just bothers me a little bit so I'm just going to add in another little tree as the famous Bob Ross would say some happy little trees to fill in this wonderful landscape that's starting to develop bring some space into there too and it's important to leave these gaps between them and then because I've added more colour and I've changed what I said I was going to do, I'm just going to add more water and let that bleed down. Now one of the fun things in watercolour is as this is drying, I like to use this stuff, which is a granulation spray. And I'm just going to add a very small amount to the bottom of this and you see instantly it has a strange effect where everything becomes slightly mottled. And now I'm going to work that back out, again just using water, no paint, and let that dry. And we end up with this really interesting sort of landscape grass going on at the bottom half of our image. And we'll wait for that to dry and come back to do the final wash. Well we're so very nearly there with this painting now, and I hope yours is coming out as exciting as this. And we're looking at those colours, so we've got the purples going into the oranges and the greens. And I think it would be nice to return to those oranges, but maybe add some yellow to it this time. So I'm going to get some new colours mixed up, a new blank space in my palette. And I'm going to start with a wonderful cadmium yellow. Bring that in. And it's an absolutely gorgeous yellow. I absolutely love this. I'm going to give you a close-up view of this right now. So this is the, the wonderful yellow that I'm just shaping up on the palette. And to add that to the painting would be quite interesting. And I think if we just add a little of that little area of white, which I really like the bottom of that. So what I'm going to do is just take the brush directly across like that. A bit more water, because remember we always use more water than paint. And I'm just going to take it across like so. And that gives us a nice suggestion that there's something else going on there. Now I'm going to return to this palette and I'm going to go right over here to this colour which is a nice orange 
bring it back and I'm going to bleed from the bottom this time. So I'm going to loosely fit to the bottom of that area that we've marked out as where the painting takes place. Take it right to the edge and perhaps switch to this colour over here. Let's add some of this in, a bit more. And then back to the water and just give a nice line at the bottom. Now there we have the beginnings of a really good foreground but I'm going to switch tools here is to consult my shelf of brushes and I'm going to pull out a toothbrush and you're thinking why is he got a toothbrush? Well I'm going to dip that into the water, give it a tap to get some of the water off and I'm going to go straight in to some white and some metallic silver and I've just loaded the brush up a little bit and then putting my hand over to shield what's above it I'm just going to flick the toothbrush and then use a bit more of the granulation spray but this time I'm pointing it down so it goes away from where I've done the bits above it and back to my brush again I'm going to get a bit of a lime green going on I'm just going to give a couple of splodges just to indicate some plants in the foreground and that there's this vegetation coming right the way down through the landscape those up and there we have it a really quick, really simple way of re-engaging with the real basics of watercolour. And when you look at it, you think, actually, I quite like that. It's a nice, simple idea. It creates a nice little landscape. Don't forget the most important thing with any painting is to grab yourself a nice brush and a colour that you've not used anywhere on this. So I'm going to go for a nice bright blue. Let's get some, oops, get some blue on that. And sign it. And that's it. Now, you're going to hopefully have done this at home and have some fun with it. Remember to send your artwork in for next week. And we're going to have a quick look at some of the fantastic work that you've sent in over the last week from watching what we did last week around painting with newspaper and also doing that wonderful painting of Cleveland Pier. So please enjoy the work that you've all sent in. Thank you and see you next week.